Hi everyone, Ruby Retrograde Talente here, and what I'll be serving up for you guys is an Oracle deck actually that I picked up in 2022, so last year. Um, it's part actually of another deck that I ordered. So basically, the short, long and short of it is um, there was a Kickstarter, uh, which I'll show you guys in another video. When I do, I'll put it up in that corner here. You'll see the little card. Um, I don't know if I'll do it at the same time or not. But um, there was a Kickstarter that came up and there was this Oracle that has been intriguing me for a little bit. And I kind of took the occasion, seeing as it was made by the same person, to pick it up at the same time. Now, if you guys have watched my previous videos and know me, uh, you know that usually my general aesthetic is, you know, give me something cute, something sweet, something fluffy, uh, kind of light, or, you know, um, something plant or with like lots of landscape fine and dandy, uh, but something darker, um, you know, even gory or something, not quite my cup of tea. There are exceptions uh, such as, um, uh, what is it called now? Deviant Moon, <laughs> the uh, Pips, uh, not, uh, sorry, the Illustrated um, illustrated Edition. That one was kind of a surprising uh, deck that made its way to my collection as well as uh, Taho Polka. You can see it in my channels. I've uh, um, I've done unboxing to go through the cards, and this particular oracle is another one of these cases where I don't even really actually. Yes, I know how I I discovered this deck. It was because of the Kickstarter um, that I kind of went through their previous deck and looking through the images. It, I had this kind of a huh. That's interesting, and I think I want it. And I was like, oh no, like me wanting something like with spooky images, if I can say, or like s disturbing looking images. But anyways, without further ado, I'll just show you guys what Oracle I'm talking about. Well, you already do anyways by the title. So basically, um, in the other video, I'll show you the, uh, the, the deck I picked up also from them, but let's start at least, see, as you can tell, uh, it came in this box and it came all nicely wrapped up in bubble wrap, but we'll go, we'll start first with the first, um, deck, which is called, uh, Purgatorium Hex by Mr. Freeborg. So this um, and actually it even has a little side thing, even the pie is shell burn. So just looking at this, you know, if I were to see this in the store, let's say that already, I would be like, oh no, that's not for me. It's a bit too dark, not my cup of tea, whatever. But again, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't understand what was the attraction. Um, I don't know. It was, it was, uh, it was a certain images and I guess the concept and maybe it was something that's meant to be in my collection, either for myself or someone else. Uh, if I if I ever use this deck to read with for other people, I don't know yet if I wanna uh, if I'll be using it for other people or if I'll just keep it for myself. But we'll see. But just to give a little background about this uh, um, oracle, so um, the Pur Purgatorium Hex. This was actually a Kickstarter back in 2021. Um, the campaign happened, I think, in May or something like that. Uh, or no, actually, it was in February. And I believe I picked up the second printing now when I when I got it in 2022. So basically, the whole concept of Purgatorium is that it's um, based uh, a little bit on the... Let me see, I put my notes there. On the model of loss by Dr. Kubler-Ross... See, that's why I had to make notes because I would not have remembered that name. So Dr. Kerbler-Ross combined with the Ma uh, Mantegna Tarot system. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so that's the basic concept of that. And it's, it's I believe it's images that are based on an, on the um, kind of like a witch burning type of, type of book. So if, so let's see, let me just start by opening it. So this is just a, um, like a, tuck box standard tuck box but i do have to say i do like the little embossing of the flames it, it's it feels so dark seriously if 
if if it wasn't for the fact that I saw the images and that like I don't know it, it's been kind of like calling to me I I would have just not paid it any mind now I don't want to hurt the box already so let me see if I can go and open this in a decent manner without ripping or harming the box hold on one second there we go okay let's go here so let me just read the little intro that uh, Dr. Free or not Dr. Sorry, Mr. Freeborg did on their Kickstarter for this deck at the time. So Purgatorium is the Catholic version of hell where the souls are purified in order to move on to heaven. The fire destroys and transforms. It is a process of spiritual growth, albeit a, per a painful one. This is exactly what these cards are intended to do. By examining seemingly dark scenarios, you are able to acknowledge your darker sides and shed light. Purgatory is therefore not something to be afraid of, but rather something we must, we all must go through, according to Catholic belief, uh, in order to transcend to a higher state of being. So this is the little intro that they had for their Kickstarter. So as you can see, standard tuck box, we'll put it aside. And now when you open up the box, you have a rather chunky oh hold on you have a rather chunky um guidebook i mean yeah it's rather chunky okay so, and you know what because it's like black on black it kind of remind. i have this flash of i don't know which movie it was where like the priest comes in and has the like his little bible like in a, a little black bible it kind of makes me think of that so so if we look at it uh, so we have a little first page with a quote by C.S. Lewis, and then the system, and then after that, an explanation of the model of, lo of loss, and then let me see, what did it say again? Oh, then, and then each card has a planetary system. Or planetary symbol, sorry, uh, that points to which area of the Mantegna Tarot, worldly state, the card is associated with. So um, that is something new to me, the Man Mantegna, Mante yeah, Mantegna, we'll say, uh, tarot system. So uh, that is something that I can read up on with this little thing. And if I need any more information, as we all know, Dr. Google is there. So here we have a little thing about bonding with the cards. I don't seem to see a... Okay, well, there is an index at the back of the book, but there is no um, uh, table of contents. So writing personal notes. Okay, and now we have some spreads. So the cross, then we have the devil's trident, the star, the witch's mirror. I mean, there's quite a, there's quite a, a, a selection there. I mean, it, it feels, it already feels like dark or ah like um the type of dark that kind of sinks in as if you're one in, in those uh what are those called like those rooms where it's like complete darkness and all the senses are shut off like those those uh sensory like uh room type of thing so now we have a little bit about the card meanings and you kind of see that here you don't really see the card image it's more of a background thing which is interesting. I haven't seen that before in a in a uh, little white book or in this case, little black book. So let's put that aside. We'll we'll um, take a look at it a little bit more in um, depth when we pull some cards to see uh, how it's explained. So let's go and move on to the card themselves and see how they feel. This is the back of the cards. Obviously not reversible because of the cross. Uh, they feel very nice and it has I don't know if the camera kind of picks it up well but it has this a uh, textured pattern like a waffly like pattern I think it's called linen if I'm not mistaken I feel like I forgot what what they call it but it has a it has a textured um, side to it it's matte the cards feel solid like no ish like no issues with them I mean, I, I feel like there there's there won't be any problem with shuffling them. Um, and like I mentioned, it's like matte with the texture, no rose petal, whatever. And there are no color edges, which is fine, no problem. It it I I I, I feel like it it does um, work well with the whole theme. I mean, of it like it's just black. It just feels so 
I don't know, there's a heaviness to it. Um, but anyways, what we'll do without further ado is zoom in and we will take a look at each of these cards and see if it was temporary insanity that got me to get these decks or if really there is some sort of, uh, I don't know, rapport of uh, attachment that's going on with these decks. So let's start here uh, with the first card, Death. And so we can see here when they were saying in the booklet about the planetary system that's um, coded for every card. And I mean... Apathy. Bitterness. I'm just kind of, uh, yeah, put it a bit more light too, but I don't know, there was something about bitterness. I'm just looking at it because their, their expression seemed the same. It's just that plant, which probably has something to do with that whole bitterness meaning. Possession. That is pretty disturbing. This this is the kind of card where I'm like, why did it, how did this card get to me? Or how did this deck get to me? But let's continue. We because I I can't remember which card it was that kind of pulled me towards it. Now we have deception. Self-forgiveness. Again, the kids with no pupils. Mm -mm. Dignity. Tell me why does dignity look like a hermit card and the crazy cat lady? And we're still with the moon association over here. And now we have moved on to uh, Mercury. Here we have bound. Okay, yeah, I do see the chain going on here. But it seems, hold on. Is it me or this particular demon devil is like bound to themselves? Is it me? And not only that, it seems like the chain is kind of broken over here. Am I, am I imagining things? Okay, here we have loyalty. It is looking like the guy is like doing some serious butt kissing. Dispute. Self-evident. Innocence. That is haunting. Now we have sorrow. Revolt. I wonder if it's the uh, consequence of that one there, the bound. I don't know. What do y'all think? The guy is bound and then finally like there's a whole revolt. Maybe, maybe. So now here we have love. Impotence. <laughs> if that's not an ace of one reverse, I don't know what it is. And now we're with uh, Venus here. Okay. Identity. Paranoia. Oh, okay, see, that one, that one is another disturbing. That would be a scary one. This is another card where I'm like, again, again, why? How? Then digging. This one too is another just... 
half like shiver down my spine type of thing. Not only because of that uh, looming fig figure going on here, but like the eyes of the dude. It's like, it's like the guy is digging but staring straight at you as they're doing the digging. Like, yeesh. Please don't. Then buried. Like, whoever the person is digging, like, is that you? Like, is that who, who they were digging for? And then, sorry, I'm like grabbing two cards at a time sometimes. Then baby, oh my gosh. That, that is, uh, whoo, that's heavy. That is something I would, I, I definitely would want to see, like, why? Now we have education. Wastefulness. Oh, are we, I think we're done, we're with Earth now. Were we still, yeah, we were still at Venus. So there was what, eight, seven cards. Now we're at the first card of Earth. Definitely feels like a, the shadow side of, uh, of the Ace of Pentacles here. And the image is quite telling. No, wait, did I say Earth? It's not Earth, it's Sun. That symbol is Sun, right? Right? Sure. Wow, no. No, I'm not sure anymore. I feel like I'm saying a whole bunch of nonsense. Anyways, contract. Schadenfreude. I do love that word, I have to say. That whole like... Oh, look at that. Now you're eating your words moment type of thing. Now survival. What's going on here? Is that demon trying to shove the, pers the person's head in a box? Like, what's up? Then we have Pariah. Then collaboration. Oh no, is that not a baby in one of in one of those witches' hands and a boiling cauldron? Oh no, 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 no. How? Again, how the how I need to find which card was it that freaking dragged me to this deck because I'm not understanding myself right now. Manifestation. Now we are going with Mars. Okay, because we're like going in planetary order, so that circle with a dot definitely is Earth. So self righteousness. Then we have vanity. What is going on? Is that a mirror showing the 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 devil's butt or whatever? What is what? So many questions. What is happening? Then force. That quite the the poignant image. Heard. That one is kind of funny, I have to say. It's amusing. Like when they call people, you're, you're being a sheep. Stop following the herd. Then repentance. This definitely gives a feeling of one of those like, um, uh, I forgot where it was, but it was like either a painting or a graving of like, I forgot where, where they were depicting like hell and people that were like tossed in purgatorium and they had to like burn for X amount of time before they were forgiven. Amputation. 
again quite uh poignant telling no need for inter like it's not ambiguous at all okay i'm having a bit of issue like with the cards what's going on charm And now we are on to Jupiter with greed. I feel like I've seen this 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 picture somewhere else and I can't place it where. I've seen it somewhere. I don't know. And I do apologize if you hear like beep beeps noise and whatever else. Currently there is a snow removal going on. We have the snow plows. So I, when they back, obviously it starts beeping beeping. So here we are hiding. That is scary because I'm not oh, I'm not a horror movie person and I'm like questioning my whole life and my whole judgment. I'm like why? How is this card how is this deck ending up in my collection? Sensitivity. But I have to say the art like I like the whole concept the art works well. Like the drawing works well. It's 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 like I don't know it does its job because I am perturbed, disturbed, and confused and questioning myself on how I got this deck. But I, I it's like it's like one of the I'm rubbernecking. I just can't stop. Anyways, oppression. You know what? It kind of feels like sometimes it kind of feels like that. Sometimes when you hear like, the man, the man is pu is pushing us down. The man pushing us down. Ooh. The feet. That is not the feet. That is like I'm sorry. If you consider losing your head, the feet. Well, fine. Then we have confrontation. Once again, the dynamic is definitely there. And then victory. And you know what? As I'm I'm uh, flipping through these cards, I think I'm finally catching um, that concept from uh, what was the name of the doctor again? Now I have to go look back at my my uh, notes. Uh, what was the name of that doctor? It was uh... oh, what was the name of that doctor? I'm trying to remember. It's like Doctor something. A uh, doctor. Kubla Ross, there you go. The model of loss. Because I feel like there, there's a whole story. Because now we are at hold on. <sighs> Wait, Jupiter. Saturn. Guys, I always I mix I mix the order. Past Jupiter, I mix everybody's order. So egoism. Then familiar. Familiar is it? So we have the kitty cats, birds. I think it's like one or two cats. Maybe I was I thought this one was like a tiny little goat, but it didn't make sense. So it's two black cats. And I will assume there are crows. Attack. See now that that's just terrible. Like what is going on? It just punches you in the gut. Hoarding. Loss of purity. You know, I don't really want to ask how, well, I don't want to assume, let's say, how this uh, loss of purity will be attained. Just, we'll just let the image speak on that way. That's it. Well, let's call it uh, Hades and, and, and uh, Persephone. There you go. Ooh. Purification. Then charity. I have questions about this. Because I, I want to know how the... I have to definitely... That's another card I will have to read to see how does... I will assume is milk, but could be water just because it's black and white. You know, it's ambiguous like that. And it seems like it's a 
you know, body of liquid. So I will assume that it's water, a bit kind of like the star card. So, uh, anyways, book booklet, little white, little black book, little black book. Oh, and now we are done with Saturn. Now we are with the motion. I'm not sure what OS means. I will have to look in the booklet for that one too. So the motion. And it seems like a pretty brutal demotion. That's not like a, hey, like we're going to have you to go. It's It seems to be taken by force. Then privilege. Yeah, it seems like this kid's the only one with the privilege of having a pupil. Everybody's Everybody else got blank, blank eyes. Or maybe this guy is the privilege with the arm. Is that the guy from the amputation? It seems like it, it seems like it's that guy. What y'all think? Then accusation. Oh, that is totally. See, you can. Um, I did forget to mention this earlier, but uh, for um, Mr. Freeborg, uh, Freeborg, Freiborg. I will apologize if I've been saying Freiburg and it's actually Freiburg the whole time. But um, the inspiration are those, uh, I think I mentioned it, but I probably, I don't know if I actually, if I properly said it, but it was based um, by, you know, those material back during the witch hunting times. And that is totally an image that you could either that I have seen or that you could see where, you know, when when something bad would happen and then you'd accuse the one person and then up there they go into trial and then, oh, she's a witch and you know how it goes after. Corruption. A storm. All right. Ooh, evidence. I don't know. Is it actual evidence? I'm by the look of that guy. I don't know. I wouldn't say if it's necessarily actual evidence. Uh, and then justice. Hmm. Usually justice is blind, but here it's... uh. We hear the skills are definitely kind of tipped one way. And a decision. Well, if let's, I, I'm kind of taking it from. It's almost an, an a kick in the pan. Well, kick re reflex kicking in uh, tarot or reading style because usually with the justice card, the balance are you know neutral. The sword is pointing up at least in the standard classic right Wade Smith and other places. But here it just seems like, you know, uh, uh, uh um lawyer evidence here kind of tipped the thing in someone's favor and uh whoop decision was already rendered anyways so we'll see now oh these trucks they be so loud now here we are with pm i almost want to say post-mortem and i know it's not post-mortem in action Oh my gosh, inaction. How can you be inactive when you have something creeping over your shoulder? I... Mm, that's scary. Again, how did this deck end up in my collection? Anyways, indulgence. D purging. <laughs> Is it me? Okay, I, I've been noticing this. I don't know if you guys have to, but it seems like from... You know, one, like the first card of each series, it is it is what it is. Two seems chill, then three comes in and kicks you straight in the teeth. Like this guy here, I don't know what he's doing. Well, you know, it, it kind of makes sense. Like you're, you indulge too much, you're, you're going to end up having a stomach ache and, you know, puking your guts out. But still, it just seems like the threes are just always oh, extra just roundhouse kick you like jeez give a break number three now oh gosh <laughs> we have folly over here oh my it's, it's somewhere between makes me giggle a bit but disturbing i i i don't know i don't know i i don't know how i feel about that card 
we have to read about it again. Now consequence, which may be redundant, but seems to be a consequence of folly. And now we have prayer. Sorry, the cards are like slip and sliding everywhere. To the point. Followed by wisdom. And now PC. I will have to, uh, again, the booklet. Because um, the abbreviation I'm not familiar with. Unholiness. Straight up. <laughs> that seems like the devil card. Minus the two people that would you normally be there. Then arbitrarity. Again, something is going on. Like, is are they grabbing something? And then this angel, I will assume, is like, heck no, you're not. Put it down. Wait, that's a cauldron. I thought that was just like a straight up pot of gold. No, it's a cauldron. And they're about to like dunk a head in there and then this guy is like stop it or you better do it that's the story in my head now we have plotting i think that was one of the cards like i'm like what 75 80 percent down the deck and i remember so suddenly finally there's like one card i'm like yeah there was something about this that's like so interesting like well the plotting like this is definitely you know some bad plotting going on. Like, look at the shadow here. I don't know. It's, it's, that one was really interesting. Now, action. I will also assume that this may be, um, based on, uh, Michael. Archangel Michael? Yes, Archangel, right? Right. Uh, Likeliness. I, I am assuming and guessing. Ooh, a fall. First off, is it the same guy? I don't think so because this guy has at least some sort of like garments, whereas uh, the guy in the fall is just bye bye. Then. We have calling. And then finally, world. All righty. Woo, what a trip this deck is. <laughs> I'm just, I'm questioning what was happening in 2022 that I was like, yeah. Well, I mean, for for one, I kind of get it because the 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 images, yes, they are dark. They are scary for some. Some some is just because I'm imagining if it was me with like that's like whatever's happening in the image happening to me, and I know that I would be freaking out. So that's why I'm like, mm -mm, no, no, not me, not moi. <sighs> But it's it's well it's well done. So let's start shuffling it. No issue there. It does it does feel firm and strong to the hand. So let me do a few shuffle here like this. Yeah, no issue. Let's try overhand shuffle. Not too much issues. Okay, well there's one that fell. Here, let's do because it seems it's not the same. Um, I can't do it the same way that I would normally do with a tarot deck, where I would just kind of pick a or I would draw one major and then one minor to see the how it's interpreted. So let's just still do two, but see what falls. And while shuffling, I was think I a thought came through my head where it's like, if you guys decide you want to, you know, buy this deck and you have someone around you that kind of believes that it's of the devil, definitely don't show them that one. Don't show them that deck. They will have concern for you. And they will have concern for you. That's it. 
So if you don't want them to be even more convinced that it's uh, evil, the devil, and you're about to go to uh, the very same place these images are depicting, keep that one to yourself. But the, I mean, it is a very, to me at least, it's a very obvious deck um, created, I even want to say. Like, it's a very obvious deck that's a shoe in for something like Shadow Work or digging out some serious skeletons in your closet or if, or if you want something... Whoop, I don't want all these cards. If if you want something kind of like really like thrown in your face, this is what it is. This is what's wrong with you type of thing. Or this is, yeah, this is the, the, the obvious elephant in the room that you've been ignoring or something like that. So, okay, there, you flipped. All right, contract. So let's again go to the book. So at least there's an index, but the index is not in this, wait. In what or oh you know what the index is in the order um that uh, it originally kind of was uh coming in like the the original sorting order because the world here is at the end so okay how am i gonna find dignity i kind of wish the index was actually um in uh in alphabetical order if that was the case so here we have dignity that's the moon the seventh card of the moon and here we have contract which is the second of earth now having remembering the pattern it seems like dignity is where you want to be at or the end result and actually while i have the booklet sorry oh wait i just saw the con table context i said there was none sorry but guys there's so the system bonding with card spirits card meanings and card index so quite simple um Uh, let's see. Let me just see if I could find the page again. Um, okay, so let's at least read this so we have an idea what's going on here. Um, we'll write it from here. The system behind this set of cards is based on the old Italian uh, Mantegna Tarot and the model of grief lost by Dr. Kubler Ross. So this is what we mentioned before. The Mantegna Tarot seeks to explain the world through five decades of cards. The first explores the human condition starting from Il Misero or the impervished man and progressing to the servant, the artisan, the merchant, the gentleman, and so on all the way to the Pope. Likewise, the other decades of the Mantegna Tarot explore other areas of life. Um, such as the muses, the arts, the science, the geniuses and virtues, and finally the celestial spheres. The model of loss by Dr. Kubler Ross seeks to explain the seven stages of grief that a person undergoes when experiencing a type of loss. The seven steps are shock, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, testing, and acceptance. Hold on, one, two, three. See, that's why number three always kicks you in the teeth. Because it's straight up anger. So... These two systems combine uh, in a matrix to form the base for the 10 septenary... Sept wait, hold on. I can English, I promise. Septenaries that make purgatorium. Each card has a planetary symbol that points to which area of the Bantanga Tarot, worldly stat state, the card is associated with. So we have moon here in this case. Impromishment, dignity, and imagination. Then Mercury... Venus, sun. Oh, so it was sun, not earth. Okay, so this is sun. Sorry, guys. Again, merchant, materialism, and common sense. And then Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Aha, octava spera, which is a king. Primo mobile, emperor. Prima causa. Voila, that's it. Okay, and then, and then, like I mentioned the seven stages of grief are kind of uh imp imposed or laid up on top of it so all right this was a great um side note the side track or whichever so let me go with the moon moon was all the way at the end so we're gonna go like this there we go dignity okay so here is how it is set up 
we have uh like we i mentioned at the beginning the card as a uh um transparent almost background like it's a very faded then we're a little um quote see yeah there's a little quote in this case by pope francis and then a description a high and low polarity so let's just take a look at how it is set up so i'll skip the uh, quote you can always pause it and read it yourself uh but here the description for it let me just bring up the card so you can kind of see the a clearer version a higher contrast version an old solitary witch in the middle of the dark woods is holding a burning candle that illuminates her and her surroundings. Inside her cloak, we see the universe. Yes, yes, yes. High polarity meaning, feeling of sufficiency, being enough, being at peace with oneself, enjoying time alone, understanding and abiding by the laws of the universe and respecting oneself by respecting others, a sense of belonging and joyfulness. Low polarity meaning, lacking time alone to contemplate and reflect, being too distracted to be able to hear one's own thoughts, imm immatureness, avoiding growing up and ignoring problems, loneliness. This, this, I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar with one thing, but and be, seeing as this is all a whole novel concept to me, but this, it sounds good and i was like wait i've i feel like this and i, I feel high polarity and low polarity this this kind of feels like me yes <laughs> so but uh yeah and uh, anyway so so far it's so good let me go now with um wait sun was which one let me i feel like this is what i'm gonna have to do which i think kind of sucks a little bit i wish they kind of fleshed out the contents uh the table content contents a little bit more so let's see we were at the moon and we have to go all the way to the sun. So let's see. One, two, three, four. So let's go over here. Survival. No. Or actually, you know what? I'm doing this. I should just go by the index. Because we are going to have a problem. Uh, contract. There we are. Contract says 74. Okay. 74. There we go. So, here again, a quote by uh, Amanda Hawking, the description, a devil is prepared to strike a deal. With one hand, he holds a reward, and with the other, he points to the contract. Indeed and indeed. High polarity meaning. A contract, an opportunity, a lease, a new job, a commitment, a deal or a bargain, a negotiation. Low polarity, a deal not worth making, giving up some form of liberty, compromising one's own principles, breaking a contract, breaking a personal promise. All right. I mean, I, I feel they kind of work together because in this one, they were talking, especially with the high polarity meaning like being okay um with uh with yourself hold on yeah being enough being like uh being at peace with oneself and then with the low polarity it seems like uh if if you want to combine with the low polarity uh there's you know a compromising one's principle giving up some form of liberty um or it could be that because you know you're feeling self-sufficient you're okay with yourself there's an opportunity coming up as a result of this, because now that you're, you don't, you're not so, um, mentally stressed or mentally bothered, you're able to see what that's going on. Although normally, you know, seeing these cards so dark, if you're seeing something, yeah, you, there's a contract going on and you, the first thing you, you're seeing is this, you know, devil, whatever. You're like, I don't want, I don't know, like put that away from me. I want none of that. But <laughs> at least these meaning it kind of, at least the way that I'm seeing it, it kind of forces me to kind of um, remove my gut reaction and kind of really sit in the meeting and, and and really think it through as opposed to be like, oh, a contract with the devil. E -e, no, 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 we don't want that. No, thank you. So that is very interesting. So in conclusion, Purgatorium Hex by Mr. Freiburg or Freiburg again. It is, I don't know, it is a trip. That That is, that is what I, 
I don't, that's the only thing that I, 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 I can say it is a trip. It is definitely a surprise to me in the sense that I never would have thought that this would be in my collection, but it's it, the same thing as with Divine Moon. It kind of snuck up on me like this. Uh, wait, hold on. What is that going on here on the card? Oh, no. Oh, it's okay. Um, sorry. I felt there was like a little, it felt like, I don't know if you can see it, but now that I'm touching it, I just can't stop seeing it but there's like a straight line going through the deck as if it was meant to be folded or i don't know it there was a bit more pressure over here but in any case it's one of these decks where you know looking at something like this for example here perfect example that came up hiding that i would have seen that I'm like ah, okay that's interesting i like the artwork and nothing more or this I like the hour, but not me. But there are some, there was things, or even that, like paranoia. I, I would have just been like, I would have turned my heel, like straight up. But the, it's all concepts that we go through, and I think the, the, the whole concept, you know, going through the seven stages, um, it's so relatable. Because I mean, I've had things in my life go on where, you know, after the fact and looking back, I was like, huh. I did go through a whole thing where, you know, I was upset and I, I, I couldn't believe this was happening. I'm saying this all out of order, but I've had all of this and finally now I'm kind of, yeah, it happened. I'm okay. And that's it, that, that. And it, and I think I went into this thinking I would like a deck for, to explore those areas, those those areas that those areas that hurt a little bit more, like those uh, uh, shadow work. But having actually read those two um, card meanings, I'm thinking that it might not be just for um, shadow work, like I first thought. It might actually have a bit more, a bit more to offer, a bit more meat, I guess. Um, but yeah, and and of course it's a new system so i'm kind of i'm kind of excited to learn about it and seeing how uh how well i take to it how if is it going to be difficult for me i mean already between knowing right away smith system um knowing a bit of marseille uh i've learned very briefly the eteya uh system i that that one it's one of those in the back burner i don't know if i'll ever actually be more and more comfortable with it but anyways so learning this other system with the planetary um uh with the planetary attached to it so i don't know i want to see the more of these association but i think it might be a bit easier for me to grasp because of that uh that whole model of loss uh the 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 stages of loss um, I don't know. I, I think I think when I, especially for example, like you know, the third card always being something like crazy. Well, something crazy, but it's like something like really out there, really intense, and that's what Clumenian. And that I'm, I'm like, okay, so I think I see. I I very much see that 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 model in action. Um, otherwise, speaking about the deck itself, I really like how they handle like um, just. You know, ex except for the fact, um, probably because they're new, I they're kind of clumping together, and I'm having a bit of issue just grabbing one card without two, three being stuck to. It. I have to say this this card. I don't know. I have to cover it because I can't right now with this one. <laughs> but um, no, the the card stock very nice. Uh, the artwork, like I mentioned, like really pretty. Some of some of the artwork is very intense. Like for example, that baby. You know what? I'll cover it for you guys because I'm sh I'm very sure I'm not the only one who's kind of like, Yee! let's dial it down a little bit. I mean, I'm sure if I were to read it, I I I probably would get it. But let's dial it down a little bit, okay? But um, yeah, the artwork really nice. It, it's it feels like those old um illustration I, uh, that were in those books like the the witch hunting book like how to spot a witch type of documentation they used to have around that time it has this it ha that's the feel it gives me that it's like this old thing like it, it's just sorry i'm saying like law but um 
yeah, it's just that they found all this um, um, publications and then they curated it and then boom, there you go. Here's a card. But they drew those. It's not that it was a curated, curated images. It's that they drew it. So it's, I don't know, the fact that it gives that feel like it was just pulled from a book. I mean, double, triple kudos on that. Uh, otherwise, oh, what else can I say? It is quite the interesting deck. I mean, I don't think I can say anything more other than I need to explore this deck. I'm not even sure why, how, prob you know what, maybe the best way would be for me to follow the spread in the uh, guidebook. The guidebook, by the way, I, so far, I think it's pretty, it's pretty, it, it does a good job of explaining what each of the cards meant it did a good job of explaining the system itself uh, after reading this i was like okay i get i get what's going on there um i like the setup i like the the little background for each of the card here i do wish like i mentioned earlier that the con the table of content was a little bit more fleshed out uh, so maybe you know when they here at the card meetings you would have the pages for each of the um what did they call it again? The five decades of card? Yeah, so for each of the decades, they would say, you know, like Mercury, Earth, yada, 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 etc. Or, or with the index that instead of it being in order, like in order as a, of, you know, from Mercury all the way to the other one, um, that it would be in alf alphabetical order so that it, you know, you pick, for example, disputes, you just put your fingers all to the way to the D's and then boop, there you are. But uh, th that's that's just me. It's how how I, I, I prefer when when looking for information, if it can be as simple or straightforward as possible. Otherwise, I think this will be very good um, to get to know the cards. Um, now, in terms, you know what, anyone could could take a crack at this because i mean if you're already familiar with Montaigne system go ahead uh if you have if you have even like gotten like a psychology class and gone through the that whole stages of grief that would help you too um so i think whether you're a newbie or more um experienced in terms of reading cards and things like that i don't even think it really matters in this particular case um and I'm even for myself. I've even I'm even tempted of taking it more as an oracle, more than a, another tarot system, if that makes sense. I I don't know. That's how my my brain is kind of com compart compartmentalizing it. I can I can speak work. I promise. <laughs> but in any case. I've gone and rambled on long enough, uh, and hopefully you have a better idea of. Purgatorium Hex by Mr. Freeborg. Um, let me know. What do you guys think? And also, like, the backs. It's so, I don't know. It's 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 a whole look. The whole look works. It's pulled together like, mwah, chef's kiss. Even for something that, that kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> but that's that's just me, and it's something that I, I, that I guess I have to explore. And also, even though it's a tuck box... It's really fun. I really, I, I really like the um, the flame embossing. This, this is really fun. I really much like that. So there you go. We have now gone uh, into a whole tour of Purgatorium Hex, guidebook cards, and all. Uh, let me know what do you think of this deck. Do you already have it? Seeing as it's been out there for since what 2021, I said so it's been two years now. Well, it's going to be two years at one point. Um, so do you already have it? How do you use it in your practice? Um, would this be a deck that you would add to your collection, or is this does it is is it too intense for you and it's kind of you kind of want to stand off of it? But uh, whatever, comments, anything, uh, any other questions you have, do let me know in the comment section down below, down there, down there, boop, boop. And until next time, thank you so much for spending the time to uh, get through this uh, deck flip through with me. So until next time, uh, 
goodbye and we'll probably see you for the uh kick the more recent kickstarter that doc, um, i keep on saying dr freeborg it's mr free <laughs> freiborg <laughs> so i'll see you later for uh mr free uh, freeborg's more recent kickstarter um hopefully it'll be rather soon i can't i can't guarantee which date but it'll be there all right talk to y'all later bye guys <laughs>